Yeah, give me the loot, give me the truth, give me the base. Give me the so today I'm trying the strawberry balsamic vinegar by Wishbone. In this salad we have a mix of spinach, red lettuce, arugula, garlic and herbs, butter croutons, pickled onions, sharp cherry cheese, and of course the strawberry vinegar. It's really good. It's not too sweet. The onions and cheddar help balance it out. They kind of like give it a real well rounded flavor. I enjoy it. Yeah, really good. If you want a really quick, light salad, use this recipe and it'll be great for a midday snack, maybe lunch. Here we go. We are here. It is Thursday. I'm about to actually put in some work on the old keyboard today. So make sure you're ready and activated. <laughs> So when it comes to successful musicianship, most of the time you're going to be competing with yourself. Like you're not necessarily going to be like putting out hit songs every week. There would be a formula to that, right? And so when it comes to things like making good quality music, that comes down to your goals with the music. And a lot of you don't necessarily put a goal for the music, but you put a goal for like making money for music, but not necessarily how we even enjoy your music. So put that at the forefront of everything. So personally for me, when I make my music, depending on the genre, that changes the approach. So if I'm going to do jazz, I personally believe there should be more personal improvisation involved, a little bit more spontaneity, variety, excitement, and things like that. Unless you're trying to really convey some type of mood or message, right? But then when it comes to things like, let's say, hip hop, pop music, electronic music, other things that I'm trying to dibble and dabble with, I typically and personally believe that you should focus on making things that sonically feel good like it shouldn't be like dissonant distorted or well, you can use distortion but i mean like in the point to where like it's painful to listen to you know but after that you want to go for like either high energy and if you're going for a more low energy song then you want to make sure that sonically everything's there you're making space for all the sounds and things like that the top notch life. I really wanna live the top notch life. I really wanna live the top notch life. Whatever it takes, the top notch life. I really wanna live the top notch life. So essentially, setting your own path when it comes to this uh, creativity and music thing is gonna be key because you'll be the the foundation for the agenda that you have for your career. Now, what does that even mean? So that means that, let's say you want to be a rapper, right? You want to rhyme words on beats. That's your job as a rapper. You can make that the priority of your agenda, or you can make it the, let's say, like side story to your agenda. So do you want to focus on being a good rapper, which takes learning music theory and rhythms and get your reps in and creating music, right? Or do you want the image and the results of a rapper? So whatever you're focusing on is going to really change your trajectory when it comes to things. So like for me personally, I prefer to be good at it, have a skill that I can transfer into other you know opportunities. But the sacrifice with that is that you have to literally earn the status that you want from your skill set, right? Because there's other people who have either a lower skill set or don't need as much skill set to get more status or more rewards for their work. And a lot of people I see struggle with accepting that. 
because they would prefer the more comfortable, easier route of, you know, putting a hit song on TikTok and we keep replaying it so much that they can make a living. But it's not realistic because it's not actual work, right? It's not actual, you know, progress, pushing of some kind of goal and attaining a result. So let's look at something like rap blogs, right? Rap blogs typically are just showcasing what we are willing to engage because that's how they make their money, right? You're, they're not making money off showing you the most authentic, the most realistic, the most uh, high quality music artistry or whatever it is you're looking for from them, right? They're not, that's not their goal. So their agenda is very different from yours if you want to be a rapper basically the relationship between you as a rapper and let's say a rap blog any rap blog would be a interdependent relationship meaning as long as you are cool to the rest of them people back there we'll repost your music but how can you be cool to them people right and that's the really hard part that a lot of artists tend to struggle with because if you've done something like um instrumental school music and things like that for years and then you want to break out into pop music and things like that understanding how you're cool to them may come with a struggle because you're not necessarily engulfed in the things that they think are cool you may be more interested in let's say higher quality music or more serious works you may be more interested in things that are not necessarily going with the grain as far as what most people are enjoying. So you have to break through all of that and essentially create your niche that then makes value for the rap blogs or pop blogs or entertainment blogs to finally cover giving you more eyesight for people that may enjoy what you do. But the strange thing about having to deal with that, right? is you will struggle with giving the people what they want and then expecting people to respect who you are and what you make and things like that, your personal story and stuff like that. So that's why it's important to find your lane because everybody's not gonna like you, right? But if you're controversial enough, if you're engaging enough, they will clearly look at what you're doing. But Will it be of value to your agenda as an artist? And that's the, the key thing you have to really figure out as an artist. What is the key thing that you're here to do as an artist that amidst all types of obstacles and hurdles in your way, that's the main focus. What is that for you as an artist? Because if it's just, I want a hit song, then we can give you a hit song, but it won't do anything for you other than we just know your song. We've seen plenty of hit songs before. You know the names of people with hit songs that you don't search for any more music for. You know, it's a real thing. So if you're going to be a, let's say like a beat maker or producer or anything like that, and you're thinking about like doing this as more of a, like a, like a skill-based thing. Like I wanna get good at making beats. I wanna either do that or make a business out of it. Then you're gonna wanna figure out what's the focus that you want this whole thing to be about. Because if it's something along the lines of like, I just have fun with it. Um, it's just the thing I like to do. The worst one I see is um, I'm keeping real hip hop alive. Um, from the 90s, things like that. Like if those are the things that motivate you to keep making beats, making music, writing lyrics, or playing your instrument, you're not gonna stick with it because that's an emotional attachment. You don't have a duty to the thing that you're doing, right? So if for some reason tomorrow, Little Nas X drops a song and no one's listening to boom bap hip hop, all the people who were emotionally attached to boom bap are gonna feel some type of way and either gonna step away from the world and reject everything and resent all the, the pop culture that's going on, or they'll learn to embrace it and find out how to make what they do work within everything else that's going on. So this is something that you struggle with. This is, you may wanna ask some questions in the comments about how you can make this better, 
what things will improve your situation as far as getting an agenda as an artist and making sure your agenda as an artist is a valuable one. So let's get to it.